At its peak, the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya was, by leaps and bounds, one of the most popular anime of the late 2000s. And with a second season premiering in 2009, it really seemed like Haruhi's popularity, which we sometimes called Haruhiism, just couldn't be stopped. That is, until something happened. <laughs> Depending on who you ask, Haruhi's Endless Eight arc is either the most hilarious stroke of genius or aggravating waste of time and resources in anime history. Yeah, it's definitely not an exaggeration to call it one of the most divisive non-filler arcs in a well-known anime. In fact, honestly, I'd go so far as to call it one of the most hated arcs of all time, and I would not be alone in thinking that. You see, when the second season of Haruhi started airing, it was ranked at number 19 on myanimelist.net based based on the amount of users with it in their lists and the scores that they gave it out of 10. A few weeks after the arc finished up, on the other hand, it plunged all the way down to 1,475. As a reminder, this happened in the span of only three months, and it's almost 100% because of the Endless Eight arc. Yeah. That's absolutely bonkers to think about, right? Well, you know what? This whole thing was bonkers. The arc itself was bonkers. The marketing, the aftermath, the reactions people were having, all of it, absolutely bananas. This video is spoiler free, but for those of you interested, you can read the entirety of The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya on Bookwalker, this video's sponsor. And yes, in case you were wondering, they do already have the newest Haruhi novel, The Intuition of Haruhi Suzumiya. You can get 600 yen off your first purchase when you use the coupon code REDBARD, which is a fantastic deal, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link in the description and in the pinned comment with that code in it, as well as all the Haruhi content. So. On that note, let me tell you all about Endless Eight. Alright, so first things first, before we can talk about what made Endless 8 so frustrating, first we need to be on the same page about what Endless 8 is. And the answer to that is going to depend on whether you're talking about the Haruhi Suzumiya light novels or the anime. In the light novels, which, as a reminder, are the source material, Endless 8 is a fairly short arc in which the main characters, the SOS Brigade, enter a Groundhog Day-esque time loop that spans throughout the last two weeks of August, hence the name Endless Eight. Only one of them is actually aware of all these loops, though, and in fact actually remembers all of them, but at the risk of spoiling stuff, I'll just leave it with saying that they can't do anything about it. The Brigade ultimately repeats this loop well over 15,000 times before finally escaping it, but the arc itself is only one chapter long. In the Haruhi anime, on the other hand, you know, the concept is still the same, it's just the Brigade members being trapped in a time loop, but instead of being fairly quick like it is in the light novel, it takes up eight out of the 14 episodes in the second season. Each episode is almost completely identical, with only inconsequential visual elements like camera shots and everyone's outfits being the only things that consistently change. Well, that and slightly varying degrees of Kyon feeling like he's having deja vu, but you get the idea. There's subtle differences in each of the episodes, yes, but it's hardly a stretch to say that their content is nonetheless all the same. The bottom line here is that more than half of the second season of Haruhi Suzumi is virtually the same episode over and over again. Now, the concept of the same episode repeating itself eight times in a 14 episode series, I mean, that's bad enough as it is. But it gets worse when you remember that the second season of Haruhi Suzumiya was, without a doubt, one of the most highly anticipated anime of 2009. Not to mention the fact that up until the 11th hour, the marketing for this anime was vague at best and downright misleading at worst. While the first light novel came out in 2003, when the first season of The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya aired in 2006, it took the anime community by storm almost immediately. Its DVD and light novel sales were through the roof, it had its own mock religion, and the anime's signature Harahara Yukai dance was simply THE dance to know. Indeed, Haruhiism was inescapable. A second season seemed inevitable, and finally it was confirmed in July 2007 by New Type Magazine and a 
Asahi newspaper. More specifically, New Type confirmed that there'd be news about it coming up soon, and two days later, Asahi ran an ad for it, saying that it's a thing that's happening. Some sources say that at the time, it was the largest anime ad to have been in Asahi, and honestly, I don't doubt that, since Haruhi was, at the time at least, one of the most popular anime in recent memory. And as though to prove that, this announcement was met with cheers from across the globe, even though it really didn't offer any details about the second season, aside from, well, that it was a thing that was happening. The closest thing to a hint as to what would be in the second season was some grainy live-action footage that was supposed to be promo videos, which helped light novel fans deduce that they were probably a reference to the light novel's Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody story, so, hmm, yeah, safe bet that we'll be seeing that, but even then, it's hard to feel 100% sure. People wouldn't start making any more substantial guesses about what might or might not be in the second season again until the end of the year, in December of 2007, when the Haruhi.tv site disappeared for a while and prompted visitors to input a password. Any clever users who input K-N-S-A-K, the initials of the SOS, West Brigade members would see a message from Yuki N, as in Yuki Nagato, one of the main characters, and if you hit enter again, you'd see a promo image saying that the second season was being stopped and that a new project was happening. Wait, what? Fast forward to June of 08, the July issue of New Type featured images from the light novel's Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya arc, a very widely loved arc in case you're unfamiliar with it. So, whatever's happening at this point, whether it's a different version of the second season or a totally new project altogether, you know, whatever it is, it's probably going to contain the Disappearance arc. Awesome. But it would be more awesome if anyone had any idea about what was going on with the second season that may or may not still be on the table. At this point, it had been almost a year since that initial announcement was made, and there was still no word on when this thing was going to air, if it was still going to air at all, so, I mean, what gives? Well, in January of 2009, New Type finally announces that some big Haruhi news is coming up soon, and you know, last time New Type said something like this is when Haruhi's second season got confirmed, so, you know, presumably this is gonna be either more details on that new animation project or an air date for season two. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, it's a couple of short parody series. Damn it! <laughs> Fast forward to spring, Yuki Nagato was on the March 2009 New Type cover because Haruhi Season 1 would start re-airing in Japan in April. Immediately, this made a lot of people think that Haruhi Season 2 would soon be upon us. I mean, why else would they be rebroadcasting it, right? But Kadokawa shot down all glimmers of hope by quickly announcing about this rerun, it is a rebroadcast. It is broadcasting mainly on Teletama and other UHF stations. Reactions to this were pretty mixed. I mean, on one hand, you really think Kadokawa would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? But on the other, the rebroadcast had 28 episodes set aside, which is double the length of the first season. Then at the end of the day, the idea that they're just pulling our collective leg about this just being a rebroadcast seems a lot more likely than something like, I don't know, them airing the season once in broadcast order, immediately followed up by another in chronological order, or something like that, which is the only other reasonable explanation as to why they'd have 28 episodes set aside. Oh, and speaking of the broadcast order versus chronological order thing, I'm gonna need to go ahead and explain that for this next part. You see, when the first season of Haruhi aired in Japan, the episodes aired completely out of chronological order. This was done on purpose as an artistic decision, and fun fact, it is the preferred watch order of series director Tatsuya Ishihara. But I'm telling you this so that you can also feel kind of confused at the fact that once the rebroadcast started, some stations were going in chronological logical order, and others were going in broadcast order. Yeah, as you can imagine, fans were feeling very frustrated. It wouldn't be until May that people actually started to get their hopes up again when they noticed that Wakayama TV had mistakenly listed a new Haruhi episode in their schedule. While this would normally be considered pretty damning evidence that season 2 was actually happening this time, by now most of the fans who had been keeping tabs on the situation had been scarred by KyoAni enough times to know that they should never take things like this too seriously, you know, not when Haruhi was involved, at least. And really, that just made it all the more surprising when, on the episode's scheduled air date, May 21st, a new episode actually aired. And so finally, after two long years of confusion, misdirection, and more than anything else, anticipation,
Fans were blindsided with the sudden release of the first brand new full-length episode of Haruhi Suzumiya in three years. Pretty much every online anime community that you can imagine lost their collective minds and rushed into streams and torrents with the episodes so they could see with their own eyes that at long last a new episode really was here. As many predicted, it was Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody. It was a great way to open up the season. Everyone's feeling great about this show and they can't wait for the next episode. You know, KyoAnnie's had their fun pulling their little pranks on the Haruhi fans in the last couple of years, but surely now that the second season is out, they're done with all that. <laughs> Spoiler alert, they were not done with all that. The next new episode was all about the adventures the SOS Brigade had in their last two weeks of summer vacation, and the title of this episode was Endless Eight. At the surface, this was just a lighthearted episode meant to break up the chaos of the rest of the series, but of course, light novel fans nonetheless knew that there was more to this episode than what meets the eye. Unfortunately for them, though, they didn't know just how much more that was gonna end up being. You sweet summer child, you babe swaddled in the cashmere blanket of ignorance. So yeah, the first episode of Endless 8 airs and it's whatever. There's still a lot of people who don't know what this arc is in general, and even to the fans who were familiar with it, nothing really feels off about this episode. In fact, a lot of people are feeling pretty optimistic and are excited about it, so yeah. Whatever. And the same can more or less be said about the next week's episode, the third new episode overall, and the second of Endless Eight. Aside from the aforementioned visual changes, the only substantial difference in this episode is a scene where the SOS Brigade Sans Haruhi has a discussion that makes him realize that they're trapped in a time loop. But aside from that scene, this episode was basically identical to the one that aired the week before. Light novel fans had a good chuckle at the anime only fans who were blindsided by this but since many assumed that next week's episode would surely have to be the one that concludes the arc, nobody seemed to feel particularly annoyed by this otherwise gimmicky episode. You know, not yet, at least. A week passes and the fourth new episode overall, the third episode of Endless Eight airs. Despite the expectations of light novel fans, yet again this episode was almost completely identical to the last week's episode, which itself had only one noticeable difference from the episode that aired the week before it. This is the turning point where people start feeling concerned and annoyed by this because on top of all these episodes being identical, they don't really have any kind of resolution in sight. And remember, this is only going to be a 14 episode long season. Every episode that's taken up by this Endless 8 gimmick is just one less episode of the new content that fans were excitedly waiting years for. Some people start guessing, perhaps sarcastically, that based on its name, Endless 8 might even take up 8 out of the 14 episodes. I'm going to tell him. Don't you dare. In 2009, anime blogger Chikorita157 made a chart showing Anime Suki's episode by episode ratings for Haruhi Season 2, and this episode is the one where we start seeing a sudden jump in 1 out of 10 ratings, which, you know, to me that illustrates that this is when it really started to dawn on people that Endless 8 wouldn't be happening the way they thought it would. A trip to my anime lists episode by episode discussions of Haruhi Season 2 yield similar results, as this is the the first episode where more people give it a low rating in the poll than not. And by the sound of some of the responses to this episode that you can still find online, none of this really comes as much of a shock. Uh, another Endless 8 episode? I'm in despair. The endlessly repeating episodes of Endless 8 have left me in despair! <laughs> Oh, apparently Haruhi episode 4 is just a third Endless 8. That doesn't finish it. Kyo Annie, trolling us even during the season. Yet another week passes. We're on the fifth new episode overall and the fourth episode of Endless 8. Yet again, it's 
basically identical to all those that aired before it, and yet again, it shows no sign of resolution. While the idea of this arc being eight episodes long was probably originally meant to be more of a joke, people are now starting to take that idea seriously. The aforementioned graph of the Anime Suki scores shows that this is the episode with the most 1 out of 10 ratings. And while this one was made in 2020, a graph made by my anime list Shymander shows that this episode has remained the Endless 8 episode where the most people have dropped the series. I'm betting that at least some of those 600-ish drops are left over from 2009 because, like the week before, reactions to this episode that you can still find online are pretty bleak. The Endless 8 is making me hate Haruhi. It's endless. Another week of Endless 8. This is ridiculous. If it doesn't end next episode, I'm just giving up. Another week passes. We're on the sixth new episode overall, the fifth of Endless 8. Photos from 2chan of Trash Taruhi merch start to circulate, and this is relatable content for pretty much everyone still watching Haruhi. Everyone is just so profoundly tired of Endless 8 right now, and interestingly, that even includes former KyoAni director Yutaka Yamamoto. You see, shortly after this episode came out, he was a guest at Otakon, where he stated that, one, he knew that this was going to happen since a year ago, two, he was against the idea, and, like many other fans, thought that it didn't need to go on for more than two episodes, and three... <laughs> Um, so I'd like to say as a representative of the SOS Brigade Production Committee, I apologize. Interesting note, by the way, is that Yamamoto wasn't the only person associated with KyoAni and or the production of the Haruhi anime who had feelings like this about Endless 8. Well, feelings that were expressed on a public platform, at the very least. An anonymous member of KyoAni's production staff and Haruhi's Japanese voice actress, Aya Hirano, also briefly discussed their frustrations with Endless 8. And then a little later down the road, at SAC Anime 2012, Yuki and Koizumi's English voice actors, Michelle Ruff and Johnny Young Bosk respectively, would express similar frustrations as well. What was it like working on Endless A? Woo! Uh, it was endless. <laughs> it was endless. I was, was like, eight. really? I'm like, can't you just copy and paste? <laughs> no, just do the whole thing. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. You too? I mean, it, it makes sense that, I mean, what, how brave of them to do something like that, first off, you know? And, and it kind of makes sense that it's in that whatever, like it's just Time alternate, warp. yeah, and just going, and so it it's kind of makes sense, but then, yeah, as we were dubbing it, it was like, and it's the same line? The same line over yeah. and over. It's <laughs> yeah. like Groundhog's Day. I had actually, I had actually mentioned to like Eric and them, the producers, I was like, hey, could, could we like switch up roles? Could I be like, you know, how do he? You know, it's, a, it's an alternate world, right? Yeah, can we, can we have, can we have accents in another episode? And, and they had actually were like, that's a great idea, but then it was shot down. But to get back to episode 5, by this point, the reactions to Endless 8 had become so plentiful and so extreme that even members of the anime community who weren't watching Haruhi were extremely aware of what Endless 8 was doing, and watching people who were still watching the show became a bit of an event all its own. And with reactions like these, honestly, it's... Easy to understand how. Never watch two episodes of Endless 8 together. It's dangerous for your health. Well, I've learned my lesson. Don't get your hopes high up for an anime you think is good. After the disrespectful, at least to fans, crap that is Haruhi Season 2 up till now, I hope it loses some of its support and fan base. What they're doing is inexcusable. Oh my god, who would have thought it? New Haruhi episode is Endless 8 again, god damn it! All caps, again, ah! Another week later, we're on the seventh new episode overall, the sixth of Endless 8. Fans had their angry moment, and now they're right back at hopelessness. 
five episodes of Endless Eight. How do you hate? Why do you hate your fans? Some of the episodes look more like KO than if you stop them in places. <laughs> Endless Eight continues. I guess being a casual fan is saving me. Another week slowly passes. We're on the eighth new episode overall, the seventh of Endless Eight. To really help give you a good idea about how much time has passed, the arc started airing in mid-June. At this point, it's now the end of July, and it would be August by the time the next episode would air. But a light in the darkness finally appeared on August 5th, when an early copy of New Type seemed to confirm that Endless Eight would indeed be ending in its eighth episode. The news was met with some optimism, some skepticism, but really mostly it was just met with the exhausted sighs of people who just really wanted Endless 8 to end already. So the good news was that the next episode would be airing the day after this news broke, so the wait to see if it really was for real or not wouldn't be long. But the bad news was that it nonetheless didn't make the wait any less painful. This time loop is trolling of epic proportions. And Endless 8 continues. Who the hell's gonna buy the DVDs? The live angry 4chan threads are already more fun than the actual show. <sighs> Alright, moment of truth. Time passes, we're on the ninth new episode overall, the eighth of Endless 8. If Endless 8 really does end this week, then that means there's only going to be five episodes left for new content, which is kind of a bummer considering just how much hype this anime had at the beginning. But anyways, with bated breath, people stood by wondering, hoping that Endless 8 would finally end this week. One Twitter user threatened to blame the results of their impending driver's test on the results of this episode, so, you know. The stakes were high. So, what happened? Finally over! Ah! I can start watching Harry again! Yay! In the state is over! In the state is over! In the state is over! Ah! I always knew it was the homework! Ever since the fifth episode! I've never been so happy! <laughs> I survived the endless eight! The pain finally ends today! No more endless eight! It finally ended! I screamed! Finally! When Kion finally said he didn't do his homework. After eight long weeks, Endless Eight finally came to an end. And just like when Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody aired, pretty much every online anime community you can imagine lost their collective mind. Honestly, Haruhi fans, Haruhi haters, and the anime fan community at large just collectively being glad that Endless 8 was finally over is probably the closest that the collective anime fan community has ever been to fully agreeing on something. Oh, <laughs> and in case you were wondering, by the way, the aforementioned Twitter user did indeed pass their driver's test, so, you know, it was a good day for everybody. In any case, the series continued, but fans had the mixed fortune of the Psy arc being next, and the Psy arc, for those of you unfamiliar, is not exactly the most popular arc, suffice to say, but you know, it was still something other than Endless 8, and after eight weeks of the same episode over and over again, even the Psy arc can seem great in comparison, even if it did take up the remaining few episodes of the season, and it did, in case I wasn't clear about that. In any case, Endless 8 went on to be pretty infamous in its own right, and even now, more than ten years later, it still gets discussed pretty regularly. In fact, really the unfortunate fate of the Haruhi a Mia series in general has become pretty infamous in its own right as well, since it was just so unbelievably popular at its peak, but nowadays? Meh. Up until the announcement that a new light novel would finally be coming out, you generally wouldn't hear too much about Haruhi Suzumiya outside of the occasional retrospective of the rapid rise and fall of the series' popularity. Speaking of which... The 
the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya movie was announced pretty quick after the second season finished airing, so right off the bat, that won back a lot of the fans who dropped the show. And that goes double for after the movie actually came out and saw the massive financial and critical success that it did. But to get back to those first couple of weeks and months after Endless 8 aired, obviously the first question that a lot of people had was whether or not the second season's DVDs would sell well. More specifically, pretty much everyone, Katokawa included, actually, expected the ones with the Endless 8 episodes to absolutely bomb. Remember, in 2009, anime DVD releases are still mostly volumized, meaning that rather than the full sets that are pretty standard nowadays, generally you would have to buy a full series two to four episodes at a time on separate DVDs that would release over the span of a few months, and each of those DVDs was full price. To be more specific to the case of Endless 8, the arc would be released in four DVDs, each with two episodes on them. So, in other words, the idea was that fans would be paying 240 to 280 2020 US dollars for the same episode across four discs. So knowing all that, and knowing how remarkably unpopular Endless 8 already was, and knowing that the Endless 8 DVDs were getting review bombed on Amazon JP well before their release dates, yeah, honestly, it'd be weirder if Kadokawa wasn't worried. But alas, boring as many of you will surely find it, the DVD sales were pretty decent actually. To be more specific, success is relative, and while each of the Endless 8 DVDs surpassed 10,000 sold units in their first week, which is usually considered to be a signifier of a highly successful release, their numbers still pale in comparison to those of the sales of the first season, and even Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody, which outsold the rest of season 2 by a landslide. That being said though, with the exception of the first Endless 8 DVD, which sold marginally better, actually, Endless 8's DVD sales were still on par with the Cyarchs DVDs. So, you know, really, all in all, I wouldn't call Endless 8's DVD sales particularly good or bad, which, honestly, I guess is a bit of an accomplishment considering just how many people were expecting them to flop. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> so by now you've probably been thinking, okay, so Katokawa, KyoAni, I mean, it sounds like everyone involved knew that Endless 8 was a risky idea, and even though it ended up working out for them, that still begs the question of why they decided to do it this way in the first place. Why was Endless 8 made this way if it was such an obviously risky idea? And the answer to that question would be answered just a few months after those DVD releases, right around the release of the Disappearance movie. A roundtable discussion with Nagaru Tanigawa, Tetsuya Ishihara, and Fumihiko Shimo revealed that originally the Disappearance arc was gonna be in the second season. But then despite their best efforts, the episode scripts were just becoming way too too long, and the compromise seemed to be turning it into its own movie. Of course, by doing that though, they now had more episodes of the second season that they needed to fill, and really turning those extra episodes into more Endless 8 must have seemed like a no-brainer. I mean, it would have been relatively easy to do, it would help drive the point home of just how painful the time loop was, and really, given where they were in the story's timeline, I mean, what else would they have done if not this? And thus, the idea for Endless 8 as we now know it was born. The legacy of Endless 8 is a mixed one. On one hand, there are some Haruhi fans who will tell you that it was an innovative way for KyoAni to get their point across and is therefore necessary for understanding the Disappearance movie, but then, on the other hand, others will tell you that you really only need to watch the first and last episodes to get the idea. You know, maybe just one of the middle episodes too if you're feeling a little spicy. But even though people are still arguing about how necessary Endless is or isn't, the fact that there are still people talking about this more than 10 years later just at all should fully illustrate that, if nothing else, the legacy of Endless 8 is a remarkably long-lasting one. Example A. 2020 and 21 mark the 10th anniversary of the Disappearance movie and the 15th anniversary of Haruhi Season 1, respectively. So Katokawa decided that, hey, you know, to celebrate, they'd be selling some fancy Haruhi woodblock prints. So what kind of imagery did they decide to use? Well, the fact that these were supposedly made 
to celebrate the Disappearance movie, and season one did not stop them from giving it an Endless Eight theme anyways. Example B. In perhaps the most on-brand move possible, Pop Team Epic parodied Endless Eight in 2018 by airing its eighth episode on Abama TV eight times in a row. It didn't affect the airing schedule of the rest of the show, just in case that wasn't clear. This was just parody and nothing more. Still though, making this extra hilarious is the fact that each episode of Pop Team Epic is basically the same 12-ish minute episode, but two times, but with different voice actors and a couple of minute differences. So, as many took note of, by airing the eighth episode eight times, it was actually more like they were airing it 16 times. Yosh, Sakazuki no Ike, Kore Susuro ya. In any case, one myth that started circulating pretty quick was that Endless 8 is what killed Haruhi's popularity since, with the obvious exception of the new light novel, and we'll talk about that in just a bit, don't worry, the only other new pieces of Haruhi content to come out since the Disappearance movie have been pretty low-key. But simply put, to say that Endless 8 is what caused the decline of Haruhiism just is not true, or at the very least, it's not true the way people who believe this usually think that it is. To be more specific, there are three key events that people usually attribute the downfall of Haruhiism to, but really, I think two out of these three could have been easily overcome if not for the actual reason of Haruhiism's decline, that third key event right there. Anyways, the two smaller contributing factors, if you even want to call them that, are of course Endless 8, and also Haruhi's Japanese voice actress Aya Hirano getting caught up in what many have deemed a huge scandal in 2010 and 11. And I gotta say what many have deemed because in reality it's more accurate to say that her fans found out that she does indeed have a love life, and for an idol like Aya in Japan in the early 2010s, that's a massive publicity problem. In fact, bad publicity was the least of her problems, seeing as how she was getting death threats to the extent that someone landed in prison for him. And you know, we could sit here and I could derail this video into a dissection on how toxic idol culture can be, how ridiculous the mindset of only being someone's fan if they're single is, or even just Aya's career before versus after the scandal, but at the end of the day none of that would be terribly relevant because none of this has anything to do with the actual reason for the decline of Haruhiism. Case in point, Aya still revised her role as Haruhi when the disappearance of Yuki anime started airing in 2015. And that leads us to what the actual reason is. And it's just that nearly a decade passed without any new main series Haruhi light novels getting made. And I say main series to account for the two quick chapters that series creator Nagaru Tanigawa published in 2011 and 13, as well as the disappearance of Yuki spin off manga. Worth noting, though, about the disappearance of Yuki is that while Tanigawa is officially credited for the story, the evidence tends to suggest that he had little or no direct involvement with it. In other words, he's credited for the story because he's the creator of the Haruhi Suzumiya series which, you know, this is a spin-off of, so in short, it's really more accurate to call the disappearance of Yuki Puyo's series rather than Tanigawa's. In any case, while the canonity of the disappearance of Yuki is questionable, it's still the only new and even somewhat official Haruhi content that we've got in nearly a decade. It's also the source material of the only new Haruhi anime that we've got since the disappearance movie, and while some people enjoy this anime, of course, more often even than not, people tend to think it's just... Meh. So with no new main series content in almost 10 years, and a spin-off with an anime that received lukewarm reviews at best, it's easy to see how that would put any series in a decline. And considering how close Endless 8 and the Aya controversy happened to the Disappearance movie, you know, the last gasp of Haruhi's popularity, it's easy to see how some people got the idea that it was their fault rather than the lack of new content. As for the reason there hasn't been any new main series content in so long, well, alas, there doesn't really seem to be a specific or an official one. Starting with the third season of the anime, there's countless posts of people speculating why one still hasn't got made despite there still being 
you know, maybe a season's worth of source material available, but a lot of those speculated reasons tend to boil down to the fact that Tanigawa's writing schedule is highly irregular, so a third season wouldn't really give Kadokawa a platform to promote anything new. Granted, the release of the intuition of Haruhi Suzumiya might change things, we'll just have to wait and see, but at the very least, I think it's reasonable to believe that the lack of new light novels has played a significant role in why a third season of Haruhi hasn't been made thus far. And as for why there haven't been any new light novels, well, Tanigawa has a reputation of being a rather private and elusive person, and the advent of social media hasn't really changed that. Of course, that being said, we do know very well from the afterword of the surprise of Haruhi Suzumiya, which came out four years after the novel that came out before it, that Tanigawa has a history of being really hard on himself about his writing speed, so really, if it helps his mental health, then I'm totally fine with not knowing if there ever was or wasn't a specific reason for the delay between surprise and intuition. And speaking of the intuition of Haruhi Suzumiya, that brings us to 2020 and the incredible news that for the first time in nine years, a new Haruhi life novel would finally be coming out. It's still pretty new as of when I am making this video, but the sales have nonetheless already been phenomenal. If the fact that it's even got ads on bikes doesn't already tell you all it needs to about just how prominent Haruhi continues to be, then hopefully the fact that Intuition received a digital simul release in English will. Love it or hate it, Endless 8 left a massive impression on the global anime community, certainly much more than most anime arcs have. Whether you think it's a brilliant and maybe even hilarious work of innovation, or a frustrating waste of time and resources, really is up to you, I guess. In any case, for any new or returning Haruhi fans who want to get more into it, all the Haruhi light novels to date are available on Bookwalker, a fantastic service that lets you read your favorite manga and light novels on your computer, phone, tablet, all all that good stuff. They have more fantastic titles on there than I could ever hope to count, including many of what I'm sure are your favorites. Certainly plenty of my favorites at the very least. Lately, I've been using Bookwalker to read, well, I mean the new Haruhi light novel, obviously, and I also recently read My Dad is the Queen of the VTubers, which is just as hilarious as it sounds, and I feel pretty confident that a lot of you would get a kick out of it too. But yeah, use the code REDBARD, that's REDBARD, all one word, on Bookwalker for 600 yen off of your first purchase, which is a super great deal, so be sure to use it when you check out Bookwalker. Again, there's a link in the description and in the pinned comment. And on that note, um... You know, I think I've said everything that I wanted to say, so to close this video off, um... Kion is the best SOS Brigade member. Hari, why- oh my god, Kat, why do you have to do this right now? I always knew it was the homework! I'm not close enough to the microphone! Well, I've learned my lesson. Don't get your hopes up high. God, why is it written this way? Huzzah!